in the upper right, folks, in the blue. He is for Genesis Gaming. It's Peely Peely. And in the bottom left, playing for Size Storm Gaming, still looking to keep his chances of a top four alive. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a red Zerg. It's Bioice. Right. Probe blocking the hatchery. Um, obviously, pretty standard stuff there in the PvZ openers. But for Bioways, I mean, it's been a, a kind of a an up and down group stages so far. Started off with his loss to Namshar. Then he managed to beat Yuko. Again, another reason why that if Yuko wins this, that series against Namshar, it could be so massive for him. Um, but most of his losses, you know, came to Neeb, and then he beat Creature. It's been just back and forth week by week, lost to Trigger, and then looking for the win here, of course, against Peely Peely. But it's it's been a, you know, it's been a, a, a rough road. It has not been a smooth sailing for Bioice, and the ending is, is not going to be any easier. Honestly, when I look at this, I didn't, I had a Bioice down at the very bottom of this group. And I say this as someone who, you know, used to be on a team with Bioice and thinks he's pretty cool. But I haven't seen Bioice perform super well as of late. He's played in some EBT Cups and kind of been smashed aside. His online performance has been okay. Uh, but I put players like Peely Peely pretty far above him. So it's interesting. It's good to see Bioice putting on that performance, taking down Uko, for example, who took down Trigger. So there we go. You got the cycle. Bioice mm -hmm. kills Uko, Uko kills Trigger, Trigger kills Bioice. It makes perfect sense in the world. But it's a PvZ. And Bioice, yeah. it's a this is a very this is a matchup that's gotten more interesting as of late. Uh Bioice has always had some pretty good ZVZ. But that Protoss matchup not always not been quite as much of a strong suit. Yeah, the, the, the ZVP especially recently has gotten a lot, I think, more difficult for the Zerg, where it's not just a straight up, oh, I know that the Protoss is going to go into, you know, Stargate, into Sky Toss. You know, it's this very railroady build order that just works the best for them. There's been a lot more variants. There's been a lot more different strategies that players have been able to experiment with. And so that has definitely made it a lot harder for the Zerg. Just in getting the read on what's happening and having to be a lot more, I think, um, play especially a lot more reactively to your opponent. I think, you know, for players like, you know, Serral, who already kind of did that, it wasn't that big of a shift. But especially for, I think, some of these these lower tier Zergs, you know, it's it's a lot to adapt to. Uh, yeah. I mean, this was very much a the, the advent of the hero style at about a couple months ago, three, four months ago. Uh, with such a change in how Protoss he just even existed on the map that it did cause consternation. Adepts chained to the main base, but the target fire, not the best just yet. Those are two very low workers. They get three at the end, which one more than you kind of expect to, but I feel like Bio, or, excuse me, Peely Peely could have gotten a little bit more. Well, maybe the Oracle will find that one is, uh, as Zergs have been wanting to do as of late, there is no Spore. In the outlying base, the Oracle's going to be able to dive in. Bioice relying on Queens to make this happen, but two workers will fall, and it's going to be a third here. Good control from Peely Peely. Meanwhile, Bioice on the other side tries to deny a third base, but Peely Peely, this third base is pretty slow here. This is, oh, this is interesting. So he's going double gas. Phoenix behind the Oracle. Is this just a big Sky Toss transition? Yeah, I mean, it's going to clean up this Overlord. Is it just the one Phoenix to clean up Overlords? That'd be a bit strange because I think usually most players would opt for a Void Rape because that offers you a lot more utility in defending your third base and in, you know, going across the map. But for now, yeah, there we go. More Phoenix. So it is, in fact, going to be potentially. Uh, nope. <laughs> Billy Billy changes his mind. He says, no, actually, I want a second Oracle. We're not going to Phoenix. So we're, we're approaching five minutes now. The only tech structure on the map is this Stargate. There's a third gateway on the way now. I, but with with four gas, that tells us he wants to go tech, not aggression necessarily that additional gateways would provide. This build is starting. I mean, we're past five minutes. There, there's an age old uh, say, like if you're trying to learn Zerg, one of the things you learn is if, <laughs> if there's no third past five minutes and it's not like Mass Phoenix play, uh, your opponent is all in you. Like that, that is just the mm -hmm. read here. But also the other read is if they get double gas this quickly, they're probably not. And there we go. <laughs> Finally, two more Stargate, three Stargate play here from Peely Peely. Oh my, this is, 
Yeah, I mean, this is certainly a build order to bring out here, especially in this matchup, which is so important for Bio Ice. Pilly Pilly just saying, yeah, no, I'm going to go straight to the Sky Toss. I'm going to go straight to the late game. And, you know, I don't, I, I don't think you're going to be able to beat me if I get to this stage. As the third Nexus is going to go down, Bio Ice... Is he going to be able to get a read on this? Well, right now he's producing roaches, getting the plus one ranged attack. And mind you, you know, this three Stargate transition, it is going to eat up a lot of resources. And so something like a Queen Walk could end up turning out very, very well. If that's what BioS wants to look for is a nice surround there onto the Adepts, but they're going to go straight on into the natural. So far, no workers being focused and there just needs to be a recall pop as the roaches and Zerglings are there. This build is, is kind of Patty Mac esque. He was doing something similar, not not quite to the same level of extent with Triple Stargate, but uh, this is actually how he beat Scarlet in one of the games where he went these. Uh, you get like five, six adepts, you shade him across, you lose one, you recall. Uh, interesting play, but it did work out for him uh, into that Sky Toss, but again, it was Double Stargate Phoenix, not Triple. As Phoenix start to hit the field here, the Roaches are, they're powerful, but they're not the most Ooh. powerful, right? The good lifts there, and the Oracles actually have a lot of energy, and, well, it looks like he's not going to be able to wedge his way into that position. A couple workers will go down, but this doesn't feel particularly fruitful for BioS, and he will be forced back home, but it feels like he's going to lose almost every single Roach. That's uh, not quite what you're looking for, but it looks like the Oracles run out of energy, so actually, most of them get out. This is... Yeah, Pili Pili, I mean, this is just so nice for him. He's just banking up these Phoenix, three Phoenix at a time. This is going to be a surprise. And, you know, again, there's no Spore Crawlers. Uh, actually, no, Spore Crawlers have been made um, in each base. So Overlords are cloaking them there with their gaseous forms. But, it's, you know, you're not going to be really expecting this, I think, as Bioways. You don't have anything to really deal with it. You have five Queens. That's certainly not enough to push back this many Phoenix. And look at the creep spread. That also, even though there hasn't been too much pressure aside from the Adepts, is not very far. And three Queens already getting picked off here would be disastrous. Uh, it is disastrous. And you talk about there being spores. It's one spore per base. The rule is, effectively, you want one spore per Stargate per base. Three Stargates, three spores per base. Uh, that is not happening here. And BioIce is going to find himself supply blocked until the ends of the Earth, and maybe even further than then. It's 121 out of 74. He lost all of his queens. More spores are getting dropped, of course, but for the cost of one Phoenix, you kind of take that no. one. Lings and More roaches, they flood onto the other side of the map because that's the only thing the BioIce can do. He will never be able to build a unit for the rest of this game, not really. So the run by the all in, I guess, into the natural, into the third. Well, it feels like there's just enough stuff on the ground, especially as the Phoenix get ready to eventually fly home. That I don't know that this is gonna work out all that well for, for BioIce. Yeah, I mean, he's knocking down some of the stalkers. The Oracle is starting to run out of energy, but now you're gonna get these zealots warped on in the cannon doing as much work as it can as a lot of the overlords have been cleared out. 56 supply is the supply cap here at BioAs as the roaches are gonna to start to go down. Zealot working away at that with his blades. The adepts doing their best. It's not the best matchup for them, but the stalker in the back will provide a bit more support. And I mean, you found some damage, but it was not nearly enough. Only nine probes going down. And meanwhile, behind this, Bioice is still supply blocked. Eight overlords coming on in. He has almost 2,000 minerals in the bank from this supply block. And remember, he only has one queen, so he doesn't really... I mean, he has 20 larvae now, but it doesn't really have all that much. Oh, Phoenix, just dive on top of it. Add insult to injury. Do it. Do it. Come on, Peely Peely. Dive on top. There we go. Oh, well, yeah. spores are scary. I guess it's only six Phoenix now. I'm kind of disappointed. I... I I do appreciate the, the pain of literally not being able to build anything for multiple minutes that this uh, style can provide, but I guess uh, Peely Peely is not going to be quite as sadistic as he possibly could be, but as, as these Hydras pop, which is what he was saving the larva for, well, the, the Phoenix Ooh. find them as they pop out of a base. So yes, eventually the Hydras will hit critical mass, but not before the carriers are out. And with no Carapace upgrade, these Phoenix will melt to these plus one carriers with their shields mm -hmm. done on the interceptors. So there's a slim timing. The BioWise is trying to hit right now and he doesn't even have Hydra speed. So these Hydras will take a while oh. to go on the other side of the map. Oh no. They turned around, Bayo. They turned around and is pretty, I mean, this, this is just time that BioWise cannot afford as two more Hydras are gonna go down. He is working on his two two and right now you have 22 Hydralisks. But mind you, there's also a ground army. You know, there's going to be zealots that are getting warped in, charges on the way, Templar archives for storm. 
that Hydra bus timing, it just feels like that's starting to, that's gonna close away very, very shortly as the shield upgrade finishes. As you get up to six carriers, especially, that is going to shut the door on any chances for Bioice to find damage. Uh, the timing's already done. P uh, Bioice has already accepted that it is done. We have a Lurker Den down, Infestation Pit as well. SC is getting ready to move into the late game and technically it's not the worst position. He has 82 workers and, and four bases, but let's be real here. He's lost 15 overlords. The resources lost is actually fairly even, all things considered, but the economic damage or really the production damage, mm -hmm. the, the tech damage that Biowise has taken over the course of this game makes it really hard for him to be where he wants to be by the time he's ready to do anything you're right six carriers will be on the map nine carriers will be on the map and lurkers don't really do anything against that one as the phoenix will find yet more damage one gets very low but you can take that one especially with the shield upgrade it makes the phoenix honestly even more impactful as these hydras in the middle of the map well they're gonna get found out by by, by peely peely so they don't really have an attack vector yeah 13 drones on the way aspire i think by does know that this is probably going into sky toss i mean he hasn't scouted anything out there's no, been no chances for him to get across the map worked on the fifth base right now as the oracle has been continually tagging or tagging the army just to make sure that pdp knows exactly where these hydras are 24 more lings on the way the hive i mean we could maybe see if if we get infestors out if you get vipers out and you start to get into that late game zerg army you might be able to start to see bioways get active on the map trying to find pickoffs but it's going to be a while until those all those tools are available no it really will but that's where bioways has to go he doesn't really have much of a shot in the mid game with this army his opponent's army well Actually, it's up about 30 army supply, too. I was going to say, well, maybe a little smaller, but it is bigger. Uh, just the complexity of this army with the Archons, with the carriers, with their plus one, with their shields. These Hydras do not fight this at all. So you have to move yourself in the late game. You have to get Corruptors, Infestors, uh, Vipers eventually. All of these things that allow you to actually fight a late game Protoss army. But I don't think Peely Peely is giving him that time. The Golden Armada has arrived. Ten carriers are on the field. The entire army, at least the majority of the army of Peely Peely, has been, or uh, Bioice has been revealed. And how do you, how the hell do you stop this? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, investors aren't out yet. Corruptors have been added on, so they can help. I mean, there's only two spore crawlers here as well. That's not really enough to knock down this interceptor count. Storm, I mean, is not really going to be an option, but there's still three Archons. Here we go. Corruptors trying to find their way on in. Archons, though, are absolutely ripping them to shreds as the Hydras are fighting Zealots at the front, which is not what they want to be doing. I mean, the two carriers fall? Even one, two? Two carriers fall, but by the way, loses his whole army and Peely Peely. There's a mas masterfully executed game is going to pick up game number one. That was, I feel like we're seeing the day of dirty Protoss builds against so, her. Granted, <laughs> King Carver's didn't work, mm -hmm. but I mean, that natural didn't. Yeah. Oh, that third base didn't go down until like six minutes. Like, and, and actually, we got to talk about this for a second because the fact that that base was so late actually, I think, worked mm -hmm. in Peely Peely's favor because we saw Bioice uh, not catching up with the Protoss economy for a while. He was on 44 workers when the Protoss was on like 52 uh, because he had the read that. I don't think he saw the. I don't think he saw the S timing. He had to read that while this base is so damn late, I haven't seen anything out of your Stargate really. This is probably a two base all in. That's what you're prepping for. So by Peely Peely just by denying scouting, forced Bioice into a very um, defensively greedy setup, right? Mm -hmm. not, not economically greedy, what we consider greedy, but just getting more roaches, getting more lings, getting more queens, getting anything that's not tech development and not economic development, which meant that as the Phoenix ran across the map and supply blocked Bioice for two minutes, he wasn't supply blocked from a good spot. He was supply blocked from what a spot that was already pretty bad. Yeah, it, it was really, yeah. I mean, we're just, I mean, yeah. And that's really the, the struggles of Zerg playing against Protoss is reading what's going on. And if you're not actively getting those scouts out, if you're not getting Zerglings into the bases or you don't have overlord speed and you can't get overlords into the main, it's so hard for the Zerg to understand what's happening. And then you kind of have to guess. You have to make that read just based on what you know. And as we see there, that's not going to be correct 100% of the time. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> Bioice, unfortunately, not quite ready with the three R's of uh, how to play Zerg. You know, reading, writing, and roaches. 
So, you know, it didn't quite work out for him all that well, but there's another game, another map potentially uh, for him to figure things out a little bit better. I don't know that you can get away with the the style that Peely Peely played in game one on Waterfall. It's just a little bit too small, mm -hmm. but you never know. Again, part of the reason that that was powerful for Peely Peely was it looked like it was maybe a two-base all-in from the information that BioWise had. I think he's going to scout yeah. a little harder next game. I think he's going to uh, be more active on the map. I think in, in that game too. And then, well, we're going to have to see what Peely Beely has in store for us because uh, that game one was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. It was, I think it was a well-prepared build, well executed. And you could see that BioWise didn't really have the ability to figure out what was going on and respond to it in time. And so now heading to game number two for BioWise, this is it. This is do or die. You, you need to win this series to keep your chances alive. So you got to make it happen here. That you do. Or, I mean, at the end of the day, even as we talk about it, while Peely Peely doesn't have much to fight for, he's probably not making playoffs. There's a monetary value. It's 150 bucks or whatever it is uh, to win a series for DreamHack. So, you know, I, I would love. Yeah, absolutely. Please let me make a little bit of money. <laughs> let, <laughs> let me win a little bit of money for just winning a series. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. No, yeah 150 bucks. Nice. There we go. But here we are, Waterfall, game number two. Bioways, back up against the wall. You mentioned him in the bottom left for Storm Gaming in the red. Back up against the wall, but he's got another shot. It's Bioways. And the top right. He brings out the three Stargates on two bases. He brings out the cheeky Protoss build and gets him a win. Can he do it again to ruin the hopes and dreams of his opponent? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Peely Peely. Okay, so I, I think we see something a little bit more standard from Peely Peely in game two. I, I think that triple Phoenix build, I I don't think I've actually ever seen it before. I don't think that's something you get away with multiple times. Mm -hmm. If you ever get scouted, you get the pro your opponent gets the proper number of spores and then you don't supply block them for two and a half minutes and then they run across the map and kill you with a queen walk. So that is really what that build is predicated on. When you commit to that third target, you have to, per you have to prevent the Zerg from producing for a significant amount of time. And I don't think you get away with that um, once the build has been shown. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. what do you think? Tw uh, maybe Twilight opening? DT drop? Something like that? Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like Pili Pili is going to switch it up. Like, I feel like you don't just play kind of a standard macro game from here on out because that's always very, very risky to do. You know, you already have your opponent kind of on the nice edge. They don't know what you're going to do. And they might expect that, oh, this might be a standard game. They might play it safe. They might be playing overly safe. And so there's some, um, you know, that you can take advantage of that fact and try and mix in some aggression. But we'll have to see. You know, so far there's a standard opening, nothing crazy. Um, we're not going to see any one base timing attacks, one base cheeses at all. It's just going to be a standard opening for now. And we're really just looking to see that attack from Peely Peely. As you said, will it be a Twilight Council? I think that, that might be a good possibility. But, you know, Stargate, it's solid. It's safe. You can do a lot with it. So that's going to go down for Peely Peely. I was honestly just expecting an adept timing on this map. Uh, Waterfall and Inside and Out are those maps that, for certain Protoss players at least, they will just, okay, it's this map. Drop the Twilight, drop the, th the two, three additional gateways, build the adepts, and yeah, it's not the best map build anymore, Zerg players know. Uh, you go on to 41 workers, you get your Roach Warren at, at, at XYZ time, you're, you're fine. Uh, but because the map is so short, it still can be powerful, but that is not the story. So. How many targets then? Is this going to be the one Titan? Did we see a rehash mm. of game one? I mean, I think it'd be interesting if Pili Pili maybe threw in a two Stargate. Um, but it is going to be a Void Ray. So this, I don't know, this leads me to believe that this might just be Void Ray into Oracle and then a, a transition out of that into some ground units as the Depths here are going to find their way into the main once again and should be able to find a little bit of damage. A bit of a misfire there on the first shot means that Pili Pili doesn't necessarily get the value he wants. Finds two drones, finds three. Should be able to find four. This is actually quite a bit of damage. Five drones going down. Uh, I mean, even more damage than last game. 
Yeah, I, the, the ideal is effectively, or the, the average, I guess, the standard, if you put two adepts in the base like that, you, you tend to get about two workers. But Bioice losing five because he overcommitted with his links to force the adepts out, I guess, on the assumption that they wouldn't shade in. And then, well, he just have, didn't have the links there sitting on top. So overcommitment really has been, in part, the story of this game, the story of the series for <laughs> Bioice, where he just goes, leans a little bit too far in one direction, and uh, then just it's absolutely walloped on the comeback. But, hey, you know what? It's not going to be double Stargate Phoenix. It will be, or triple Stargate Phoenix, but it looks like it will be a double Stargate Carrier, double Stargate. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is for any Pulse Crystal. So, yeah, double Stargate Carrier on the way from Beely Beely, mm -hmm. maybe Tempest in game two. He likes his flying boys. Yeah, I mean, hey, throw it back to uh, 2019 uh, <laughs> and where everyone was going this, this kind of a strategy. Every once in a while, and we'll see. I mean, I don't think we're going to see anything crazy like this being tectonic. De oh, my God. <laughs> Never mind. I called it. Can we say I called that? Yeah, okay. Titan is a genius call that this will be, in fact, be a Tempest Rush. And, okay, so <laughs> let's think about this for a second. What mm -hmm. does Waterfall provide that says yeah. you should go into Tempest, not Carriers? I mean, I think really you're looking at that dead airspace at the main and the third base, to the right of the third especially. There's a lot of dead airspace that you take advantage of. You can start to knock down the, the third, uh, especially with the range of the Tempest. And we'll see if that Tectonic Destabilizer's upgrades does come through. Of course, that buffs the Tempest damage to ground structures. And I think that's really what you try and do. I mean, this is a build that we saw um, a Classic started doing um, a while ago. Just kind of like messing around with the idea of this, of this build off two bases, um, going with these uh, Tempests. And it, it works pretty well because you're still going to be able to get a third base behind it. And the harassment ability of the Tempest is a lot safer than of something like the Carrier. Yeah, and in fairness to what you're talking about, when Classic was doing that build, that was during the era of the Queen Walk. Five Tempests, one shot a Queen. So you would do that. You would get the one shot potential on the Queen, start to tag them as they run across the map. And then by the time the Queen Walk hits the Protoss side of the map, there are no Queens and it's no longer a, a Queen Walk. It's, it's dead Queens. But that's not quite as much of a thing anymore is there's a decent com mm. commitment of roaches and lings on the other side of the map from from Bioice. But this just feels like a mistake as the Tempest will arrive. I mean, I, I don't think the roaches punch through. Third base mm. maybe gets canceled, but in the natural, there's just a full wall here. And look at how safe, look at how patient Peely Peely is being here. He's waiting to really until the last second to show these Tempests. Because he does not want Bioice. No, but actually, I'm sorry. No, Tempests are on the other side of the map. And yeah, that's... I, this feels like a mistake um, now, actually. Yeah, I don't think Pili Pili realized just how much pressure is coming through. Bioways has gone up. I mean, it's only 40 workers and then has been peddled to the metal on this unit production. All the ground units are going to go down. The natural is sacked as the Void Ray is trying its best now. The Tempest are going to come over, but the Nexus is the focus and that Nexus is going to go down. Oh, she better overcharge, though. Immediately, Lings are going to pull off and they say, hey, you Tempest, they only they only target a single unit. They don't have that much DPS. Good, dr a good probe drill though is going to try and keep as many alive as possible. And see a few probes start to go down, but mitigating the damage. 14 probes fall. Peely Peely down to 32 workers is eventually going to clean up the rest of these lings, but the third base are also under attack. That will be cleaned up. 16 probes in total fall. But the Nexus is saved. And mind you, you have, you know, these five Tempests uh, now bolstered with three Void Rays coming across the map. This is a pretty strong army alongside the Tectonic Destabilizers. Yeah, I, I don't think this is actually all that bad for Peely Peely. I was talking about how letting him in felt like a mistake. His links are going to try to make something happen, but with a Sentry and a Zealot, really not possible. Third base is still up for Peely Peely, and yeah, technically he's on 37 worth, was on 32 workers. Not great. I, there's not a lot that really deals with this. We're going to see once again Bioice lose a lot of Overlords, not Supply Block this time, and it really is all about these Eight Queens Void Rays not being Micros they need to be. So one will fall, second one runs. And the Tempest not quite tagging the Queens, there but there go. they go. This is one-shot territory, and we are on five Tempests, which means that Queens as anti-air defense are not all that powerful. There's a Spire on the way. All right, that, that is the goal if you can get the Spire up properly, but again, they have the anti-ground burst. These Tempests can knock the Spire down if they find it as they kite away. But uh, what we really need to see them do, they can kill all these Queens, but they're not doing the kiting that oh. they want. And the Queen range is just so damn long that one Tempest will fall. So now no longer do you have that burst, but 
does this lair i think this lair might go down zealots are gonna yeah. force out oh wait no, no no they're trying to force field the queens out but they don't do a good enough job even still one more shot from the tempest is gonna knock that down tempest escape board rays look like they will not for the most part but the queen is another one's gonna go down board is still alive here Feely Feely is starting to really re represent threat on the map. Another queen will fall. The transfusers are just a little bit slow. Yeah, another queen going to go down with that fifth shot. It looked like BioAce was starting to turn this in his favor, but the spore crawlers, they're not really having that much use. Finally, Corruptors are on the way, but even Corruptors, you know, the Tempests do a lot of damage against them. And behind this, you know, the counterattack by BioAce, it wasn't able to break through the wall of the Peely Peely in the natural, so... You know, you're not really seeing any threat there. That queen just barely stays alive. One more shot, not able to finish it off. Spire is now getting focused, but the Corruptors are already on their way out as the Tempests are getting quite low here. Pili Pili has to be careful. Three calls popped, one Tempest will fall, but he is able to save three at the very least. And is now just constant on that Void Ray production, knowing that Corruptors are going to be the next step here for BioIce. Yeah, this is actually just the fact that, oh, actually, no, it looks like the third base was killed. Okay. So that is something oh. at the very least. That that was what the counterattack got. I was about to say, you know, the fact that the third base didn't even go down is just so good here for Peely Peely. But at least he did lose that third base. At least BioIce was able to trade a base for a base. But a Nexus is not in, as important as a lair. And with Flux Veins on the way, plus one air just about done or just about started. Excuse me. These Void Rays are not going to be particularly useful. And the Spire is dead. You cannot rebuild it for a dog's age because you need the lair to be done. And the lair is only 75% of the way complete. Uh, Bioice building double baneling nest as well, which has got to be a mistake. He feels very flustered in this game. Yeah, this, I mean, yeah, this is a situation where Bioice is just, it's so hard to know where to go from here. The Spire is gone, so what is your anti-air options? Well, it's Queens. He's having to rebuild the main, take this fourth. There's so much having to be done just to try and recover. And of course, behind all this, Pili Pili has reestablished that third, and he's just been building nonstop Void Rays, and now they're going to have speed. They're going to go extra fast. You still have the three Tempests to help bolster this immediately. A Queen is sniped. And just look how many Zelts there are. I mean, there's no charge, and actually, there's a lot of Banelings here for Bioways. He's built a massive ground army, but his air army just doesn't match up. You see immediately that prismatic alignment is turned on and all of the queens fall and even if the ground army ends up getting cleaned up it's not enough and Peely Peely he is going to shut down Bioace's chances of a top four and grab himself a win